Postman Pratt, Postman Pratt, Postman Pratt and his black and white cat. Postman Pat's washing day. It was a sunny Wednesday morning in Greendale. Breezy, too. Pat was on his way with the letters. It's a good day for Granny Dryden's washing day, said Pat to Jess. Jess wasn't bothered about the weather. He had a wash every day. A quick lick and a paw behind the ears kept him clean. When Pat arrived at Granny Dryden's cottage, there was no washing on the line. That's funny, said Pat. No washing out. She always has it out good and early. I hope she's not poorly. Pat knocked at the door and called, Morning! Letters! And there was Granny Dryden sitting by the fire, knitting. No washing, said Pat. You've not forgotten it's Wednesday, have you? And it's a grand day for washing. Sunny and windy. It would dry in no time. Oh, no, Pat. I've certainly not forgotten, said Granny Dryden. But that new machine of mine has gone and broken down. So I'm just getting on with a bit of knitting. And there's a basket full of washing waiting to be done. I know what we can do, said Pat. Mrs. Pottage does her washing on a Thursday. If I put your washing basket in my van, I can ask her to pop your washing in with hers when I call with the post tomorrow. I'm sure she'd not mind. She has a big washing machine and plenty of hot water. Oh, Pat, that is kind, said Granny Dryden. Pat was on his way. When he called at Thompson Ground, there was no washing out there either. You're missing a good drying day, said Pat to Dorothy Thompson. The washing will have to wait, said Dorothy. If I don't get this baking done, there'll be nothing for tea. Dorothy's kitchen was full of good smells. Pat had a hot buttered scone with his cup of tea. There was no washing out at the vicarage either. The Reverend Timms was in his study, but he came out for his post. I thought you'd have some washing on the line on a grand day like this, said Pat. Quite right, Pat, said the Reverend. The good Lord sent such a day for drying washing. But I have to write a sermon for Sunday. And if I don't do it today, I'll never do it. And the Reverend went back to his writing. Dear me, said Pat, is nobody doing their washing? Ted Glenn was busy mending his Land Rover, so he did no washing. Miss Hubbard was busy with her bees, so she did no washing. George Lancaster was putting up a new hen house, so he did no washing. I hope Mrs. Pottage does her washing tomorrow, said Pat. The next day was Thursday. When Pat called on Mrs. Pottage, the kitchen was full of washing smells, and the machine was swooshing and rumbling away with a full load. So he told Mrs. Pottage about Granny Dryden's washing. Bring it in, said Mrs. Pottage. There's plenty of hot water. No trouble, she said when she saw Granny Dryden's washing. Just put it down there. Would you like a cup of tea, Pat? The kettle's just boiled. Thanks, said Pat. That would be lovely. It was hot in Mrs. Pottage's kitchen. Pat took off his hat and jacket and laid them on a chair. Then he sat down for his tea. He didn't see Mrs. Pottage tipping Granny Dryden's washing out of the basket and onto a handy chair. Mrs. Pottage didn't see Pat's hat and jacket on the chair. The washing machine finished its load. Mrs. Pottage took the clean clothes out. She put Granny Dryden's washing in. <sighs> It'll be done in no time, she said. I'll pop in for it when I've delivered my letters, said Pat. She'll want to hang it out while it's still sunny. Thanks. I'll be on my way. But when Pat went to get his hat and jacket, they weren't there. They looked all over the kitchen for them. Then Mrs. Pottage began to laugh. <laughs> there they are, 
she said. What? said Pat. In the washing machine. Pat's hat and jacket were whizzing round and round with Granny Dryden's washing. How did they get there? said Pat. You have to watch me on wash day, said Mrs. Pottage. You can't put anything down. It all goes in. <laughs> they needed a wash, said Pat. It's a bit chilly, said Mrs. Pottage. I'll lend you something of Herbert's. Pat went on his way in Mr. Pottage's second best tweed jacket and deerstalker hat. He didn't look at all like a postman. On Friday, Pat took Granny Dryden her clean washing. She was very pleased to see it. You look as though you've been in the wash as well, she said. You're looking very smart. It wasn't all bad luck, said Pat. Your machine breaking down. And he told her what had happened. And I've asked Ted to pop in and see if he can mend your machine, he said. Oh, it's all right now, said Granny Dryden. I'd only forgotten to plug it in. No wonder it wouldn't go. But don't tell Ted not to come. I haven't seen him for ages. We can have a good chat and he can tell me all about his sister's wedding. And that's what happened. Ted was bringing the wedding photographs anyway, as well as the egg whisk he'd mended months ago and forgotten all about. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the 